Good evening! <laughs> it's a duty that we hold in laughter it over to be happy to be happy and to make all the people laugh it's a duty <laughs> In lottery public, to be happy and to make all the people laugh. It's a duty. I am an African. I don't need a microphone. <laughs> people back in the days. It was because of a law called terra nullis. Terra nullis means land that belongs to no one. And I have been using that same law to claim land across the United Kingdom. <laughs> Ten years ago when I moved to St. Albans in Hertfordshire, I met a homeless man outside Tesco. He told me he was the leader of St. Albans. I bought him three cans of special brew and he gave me St. Albans. <laughs> property. The United Kingdom is not my property. I tend to unite the three southern tribes, the Welsh, the Cockneys, and the Cockneys. <laughs> if you don't get my jokes, blame the British educational system. <laughs> I used to be one of the funniest dictators in the world, and all of a sudden, since the 20th of January 2017, Donald Trump has been trying to take my fucking throne. <laughs> I actually believe that Donald Trump is an African dictator. <laughs> Let me tell you why. During the elections, he said the elections were being rigged. That is what African dictators say during the election. <laughs> Number two, he said he was going to put his opponent in jail. That is what African dictators do. And number three, he has appointed his family members into the American government. <laughs> tell me that he's an African or not. <laughs> I promise not to talk about being black. Even though I've been black for 51 years, I'm now 56. <laughs> they don't take me serious as a comedian. The other day I went to Scotland, outside London, performing with 350 people. You hear me talk about 350 people because just like Donald Trump, I inflate the number of audience members I perform to. <laughs> right now there are 350 people in this room. <laughs> And when I went to Scotland, outside London, performing with 350 people, this woman came to me and asked me if I was from UniformDating.com. <laughs> I never knew there was a website called Uniform. So I fucking registered. <laughs> African tits are looking for a tent, right? <laughs> and I found one right now. I am a popular president. I follow the will of my people, the IMF and the World Bank. <laughs> People ask me, what are my political leanings? Am I on the left, or on the right, or on the center? Hitler had a little blue book. Mayo had a little red book. President Abonjo has a little funny black book. And if you've got crayons, you can mark the dots to find out which country I'm going to massacre next. <laughs> great stuff. <laughs> Every time I say great stuff, I'm trying to remember my fucking lines. <laughs> great stuff. <laughs> I come from a country called Half Republic. It's very close to Wakanda. <laughs> if you do not know where Wakanda is, I'm sorry, you're racist. Half <laughs> Republic has no oil, they've got comedy gold. Half Republic consists of three tribes the Okorodu the tribe, which means goodness, the Kamutu tribe, which means gracious, and the Kaputu tribe, which means great balls of fire. <laughs> and I come from the great balls of fire tribe. <laughs> The Laugh Republic is called Gaddad. We have several states. It's Gamahahadad, Banta Town, Choco Town, Gigule Town, and so on and so forth. You know what really frustrates me about coming to the United Kingdom when I came on a state visit is this. Let me tell you, I brought my own currency to the United Kingdom. They don't accept it at Waitrose, but they accept it at Lido. <laughs> you don't get my jokes, blame the British education system. <laughs> I want to talk about Brexit. 
You see, look, I'm not one of these comedians who comes to the stage and criticizes you for voting in or out. But look at me. Do I look like the sort of comedian who believes in elections? <laughs> <laughs> Does it cost you 350 million pounds? There's no Article 50. There's no single market. You change the government overnight. I mean, you change the government. I went to Hastings outside London performing to 350 people. <laughs> This was the second day after the referendum, and let me tell you, when I arrived in Hastings, I knew I wasn't supposed to be in Hastings. I increased the ethnic population by 100%. <laughs> and there was a woman called Helen, and she's not here tonight, and she had a question for me on Brexit and immigration. She said, Mr. President. I said, <laughs> I said Mr. President. <laughs> So why are you not always taking my jobs? I said, Helen, what do you do for a living? She said, she's a foot massage therapist. <laughs> I said, what does that entail? She said, massaging people's feet. I said, look at me. Look at the way I'm dressed. You think I've come all the way from Africa to take your job as a foot massage therapist? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Number 10, <laughs> people to my cabinet. <laughs> Deputy President Trevor MacDonald. <laughs> Secretary of State for Arts and Culture, Chris Huber. <laughs> my Food Minister, Levi Roots. <laughs> my Sports Minister, John Terry. <laughs> my Transport Secretary, Jeremy Clarkson. And the Chancellor of the Exchequer, the Halifax man. <laughs> October 2019. Let me tell you why they suspended me. I wrote to the African Union leaders and I said, Dear African Union leaders, I am being worried about the Western democracy at the moment. It's quite likely that America, if, is not, if Trump is not re elected, it's quite likely that they might go to civil war. It's quite likely that if Brexit happens in the United Kingdom, there might be riots. Don't you think it's time for we African leaders to invade these countries because they are, so that we can protect democracy? <laughs> 11 years ago, Obama became president. He gave me hope. He gave me dreams that one day I could also become president of a great nation. 11 years down the line, I'm wearing an army uniform, calling myself President Obonjo because it sounds like Obama. <laughs> I'm terrorizing white people across the United Kingdom. <laughs> 11 years ago, Obama became president. My wife was supporting Hillary Clinton. I was supporting Obama. As soon as Obama became president, it's as if she wanted to speak with Obama. Obama this, Obama that, Obama is on TV, Obama is doing this, Obama is like that. It got to a stage that every time I made love to my wife, I recited the Obama speeches. <laughs> they said this day will never come. They said we set our size too high. We were too disillusioned, too divided to achieve a common purpose. You have done what the cynic said you couldn't do. We're about to come, we're going to say, yes, we can. <laughs> comedy is like dogging. <coughs> you go to strange places at night to perform comedy. The spotlight represents the car light. People are watching you perform. <laughs> Some are enjoying your performance. <laughs> Do you know what dogging is? <laughs> Yes or no, you do. Because out, out of 350 people, you're the only one who's laughing in here. <laughs> Did you know she was a dogger? <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> I never ever know how to end my set. I'm not really a comedian. <laughs> I'm just a president who came on a state visit to see your foreign tyrant queen, Queen Elizabeth. And let me tell you, when I arrived and I met her, I was so disappointed I didn't know she was German. <laughs> so I wanted to meet real English people. So someone said I should go to the comedy store. I went into the comedy store. It happened to be on a Friday night. And they asked audience members to come on stage. I went on stage. Five minutes, no jokes, no material. 350 people gave me a standing ovation. <laughs> Before I knew what was happening, I was gigging all over the United Kingdom. Come to Luton, come to Angel Comedy Club. My people in Africa found out I was no longer on a state visit, coup d'etat, and I have remained here ever since. 